Today's external hard drives. There's a lot of fast new SSDs out there, faster than what we've had before, and we're gonna test them on both Mac and PC and talk about how to harness some of that speed to just accelerate and improve your editing workflow. Well, hi everyone, Hudson here. Welcome to this week's Approaching the Scene. We're gonna talk a lot about some ways that you can really soup up and improve your editing workflow. Um, I'm gonna test a bunch of drives. I'm gonna talk about how I integrate them into my workflow, both on PC and Mac, give you some recommendations. Uh, and, and I've got a download for you. It's free, you just click on this video's title or show more, look at the full description. And I've got a PDF with all the results of these tests for both reading and writing on Mac and PC for these drives. And there's a few surprises in there. We're gonna test a new really fast drive that impressed me from Lexar, the Lexar Blaze. We're gonna talk about OWC's little uh, M.2 MVME drive enclosure that's Thunderbolt 3. And I'm gonna test them both on my new Mac Studio Ultra, a very, very fast Mac that I've been having a ton of fun with. I'll have some content upcoming on that. I've been getting a lot of questions. As well as my Dell XPS 15, that's a really fast i9 Intel machine with two fast internal NVMe drives, 64 gigs of RAM. Uh, it's a screamer. So they're both up to the task of testing these drives. You know, one thing I'll say before we jump in and look at those tests is that it's really important what cable you use when you're testing hard drives. You know, if you think about a fast drive, it's only as good as the pipeline you're sending the data through. I'm going to use a Thunderbolt 3 cable that's capable of up to 40 gigabytes per second for these tests, uh, far more than adequate. Uh, USB uh, super speed cables are good also. You just don't wanna use any run of the mill USB or, you know, or, or lesser cable, they're out there. If the cable came with your fast drive, keep that one with the drive. It's clearly designed to work with it. Um, and I'm a big fan, if you're using USB-C stuff, of getting some of these fast, um, Thunderbolt 3 cables. I've got one linked in that document. So that free download document has the prices, the speeds, and links to all the products I'm talking about. If you want to use those links, it helps me out and I appreciate it. So I thank you in advance, you know, and I keep information about all this kind of stuff in the digital darkroom section of the links page on my website all the time, updated with what I'm using and what I swear by. And that's always available at hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links. And I, I hugely appreciate all of you who use those links, who watch these videos, subscribe to the channel, share and like the videos, it makes a huge difference for me. Thanks so much. Uh, really quick, before we jump in and take a look at the tests of these drives, um, I wanna talk briefly about the fact that we have office hours really frequently. It's this big group gathering, tends to be Tuesday mornings, 10 a.m. Pacific, live on YouTube and Zoom, archived on YouTube to watch later. And it's interactive and we take a lot of questions from all of you. I'm gonna be on the road traveling through Owens Valley with an awesome workshop crew and, and th three people helping me out, David Archer, Rick LePage, and CJ Glynn, amazing guys. So we're gonna have a big crew up in the Alabama Hills and Mono Lake and Bristlecone Pines. I'm really looking forward to it. Then we're gonna be traveling up to the Tetons and doing workshops in the Tetons with a little bit in Lower Yosemite uh, after the flooding. Two different groups of amazing people on workshops there. Um, so I'm gonna be on the road and we'll be doing some videos like we did in Glacier National Park where we take your questions. Uh, and I'll be looking to the questions that are submitted with the sign up for the next office hours. So jump over to my website, hudsonhenry.com slash office hours, ask a question there, and we'll you know, hopefully either get to it in the next office hours that we hold, or we'll talk about it on the road and throw it into an approaching the scene video and have a discussion about it with the guys on the road. So help me out, send me those questions. We love to take them. Plus your comments and questions drive the content of this channel and I really, really appreciate it. All right, so, you know, as I said, I'm testing all these drives with a Thunderbolt cable. Um, we'll be talking about speeds on both machines, how I set up my system to utilize these faster drives, some ways I think about the way that data moves through a system as you're editing. Uh, and I'll also, right off the bat, show you a comparison of the fastest external drive, portable external drive, that I've got compared to the slowest one, which I just use as a backup on the road, an old fashioned spinning drive. Even though it's a great 
old fashioned spinning drive, I think you'll be impressed with the speed difference. All right, so let's see how fast the fastest drive, that OWC Envoy Express, moves data straight from it, an M.2 drive in an enclosure, onto the fast M.2 drive in my Mac Studio Ultra. And I'm just gonna time it with my cell phone stopwatch app. So I'll go ahead and drop it on my, I gotta start my phone up here. I drop it on my desktop at the same time as I hit start. And we can see how fast this guy is moving. And this is 22.83 gigabytes of data. That's about 22,083 megabytes. Um, that's flying through. I hit, that's 14 seconds. You know, if I was to open up my calculator and say 22,830, enter, divide by 14, I'm gonna hit the division symbol, that's 600, 1,630 megabytes per second. That's fast, super fast. All right, and let's jump over to the PC. I'm gonna put that drive over there and just show how the exact same file from the same drive looks with the read test on the PC using Windows 10. It'd be the same in Windows 11. All right, so here I'm looking at that super fast Thunderbolt 3 Envoy Express drive, the fastest of the drives, and I'm just gonna drag it onto the desktop here in Windows 10. It's the exact same thing in Windows 11. I'm gonna drop it in. One thing I love in Windows is this speed readout. You know, it fluctuates a bit during the transfer, but you get a good idea. You're still gonna wanna use a stopwatch to time it. I also love how Windows gives you the ability to pause a huge download if you wanna use the drive for something else for a minute. Just nice. All right, so you've seen how fast this fast Envoy Express uh, SSD M.2 drive is. Let's take a look at a slower drive. This is the GTEC uh, spinning drive. It's still a really nice hard drive. It's their Armor ATD series. I use this as a backup source. I wouldn't ever edit off of it or use it for fast access, but it's fine for backing up everything when I'm out on the road. It's a four terabyte big spinning drive, affordable. You know, the terabyte per dollar is really nice on it. But let's look at how it looks in comparison to one of these fast modern drives. And these are the drives we all used for years and years. Let's have a look at it. I'm not even gonna time it. I've got all that data down in that downloadable document for you all, but I think you're just gonna see that the difference between moving data on one of these fast, fast SSD drives versus using an old spinning hard drive like you're seeing transfer right now is like the difference between running off to use the bathroom, getting a cup of coffee and coming back, you know? And when you're moving bigger stuff or you're editing videos or really high resolution images with, with layers or blending panoramas, it just gets, or video editing, you know? I mean, just forget about it. Using these faster drives really saves you time and makes your computer hum faster. All right, so I'm excited to share with you some of the results that I got testing these drives. And we'll go from the fastest to the slowest by read speed. And I wanna show you how this PDF that I've got for free download, you don't need to take notes as you're watching the video. You can click on the video's title or show more depending on your platform, look at the full description and there's a link to download this little PDF document for free. The links in it gives you the prices, the speeds, both for read speeds on all these drives and for write speeds on the drive. I'm putting my network attached storage system in here too, just to give you a reference point. I'm not gonna go too into depth about that and price that out, but I'll talk really briefly about it. Um, all of these are tests run both on my fast Mac and my fast PC. Um, and, and so you can download this, see this, using these links helps me out again, just in full disclosure. I appreciate it if you use them. Um, and we'll start with the fastest drive by read speed and by write speed, which is this OWC Envoy Express enclosure. And I, I link the enclosure here. You can, you can click on that OWC Envoy Express or either of these enclosure links to just buy the little box. And then you buy a M.2 NVMe drive like would go inside a computer and it just mounts in here and there's a built-in Thunderbolt 3 cable. So you plug it in. And you can see it's blazing fast, 1,630 megabytes per second on the Mac, 1,342 megabytes per second read speed on the PC. Little disclaimer though, for PC users, I was really shocked looking at the write speeds on the Mac, 1,427 megabytes per second, faster than anything else, really, really fast for writing data. On my XPS 15 laptop, the i9 screaming system, 
I couldn't get it to go over 233 megabytes per second. That's just crazy. It's much, much slower, orders of magnitude, almost, almost you know, slower than any of the other SSDs in this test. Um, and so I went over, I have access to a really fast Windows 11 PC desktop that's also an i9-9964 gigs of RAM, super fast MVME drive, and I only got 230 megabytes per second. So something with these Envoy Express enclosures is more designed to write with Mac than with PC. I can't explain it. Just a word to the wise for the PC users that, users that want data written fast. This, this might not be your ticket. For you Mac users, these things are awesome. You know, I've got a link for a perfect storage system, two terabytes um, with the enclosure, 279 bucks. If you want to build a scratch drive, a smaller capacity scratch drive that just works as virtual memory with your machine, can speed things up. Um, I've got a 500 gigabyte option where both the enclosure and the M.2 drive are a total of 120 bucks. Pretty sweet for a blazing fast scratch drive for you Mac users. I wouldn't necessarily use it for a PC as a scratch drive though. All right, so the uh, next fastest read speed is actually through my network attached storage drive. And I have a little asterisk here. If you're interested in to know more about that, you can email me. If enough people express an interest, maybe I'll do some training materials about it. But essentially I have this Synology box that's like a little Linux based computer itself that holds eight 10 terabyte hard drives. And it's rated in a way that if two of those hard drives went down, the data would still be backed up on the other six. And it accesses read and write on both drives, sim or all of the drives simultaneously to give me really fast speeds over a 10 gigabit ethernet connection. Ten, it looks like your standard kind of ethernet old fashioned connection to the back of the computer for the internet, but it's, date, it's a very fast data connection. Uh, and you can see I'm getting 992 megabytes per second uh, for read speed off that system of drives. It's about 50 terabytes. I keep all of my archived photo, photos and video footage on there. And it lets me work with it really fast. On multiple computers at the same time, I can connect two computers via 10 gigabit ethernet. And it's also connected to my network and accessible by anything connected even via Wi-Fi on my network. It's pretty cool, expensive, but pretty cool. And on the PC, it's also just the, the both of them, they read, oh, I said the wrong thing. This is the 1141 megabytes per second read speed, whether on Mac or PC, just blazing fast. When you look at the write speed, it's a little bit slower, 691 megabytes per second uh, on the Mac and 634 megabytes per second on the PC, still very fast. I mean, most respectable. It's not gonna come close to that Envoy Express. Now let's talk about a really cool um, drive, this Lexar Blaze. This is uh, a new drive that I've been testing. It's supposed to be faster than the Samsung drives I've been using. I've been using it long enough now that it's held up well for me. It's stable. Um, it's one terabyte is the largest size. That's my only complaint with this. The Samsung's come in two terabytes, which is a really nice size to take on the road for data storage. Um, these are, you know, one terabyte, but I moved my Lightroom catalog onto it because it's read speed is 992 megabytes per second on the Mac and 951 megabytes per second on the PC. That's the fastest external drive I've tested yet. So I moved my Lightroom catalog onto this, just moved all the files right out of where they were locally stored on my computer onto this external drive. And then I just plug it into either my PC or Mac and fire up Lightroom from it. You can navigate to the Lightroom catalog file, fire up Lightroom on both systems, and whoop, there you go. You, you've got fast access to all of your cataloged previews and metadata and everything about your photo library with a very fast, transportable, shockproof hard drive that's really built um, for gamers, but works great for those of us that are creatives too because of its fast, fast speeds. This is a cool one. And its read speeds are also very respectable. 878 megabytes per second on the Mac, 634 megabytes per second on the PC. Not sure why it's slower on the PC, but this is a sweet, sweet thing to store, you know, up to a terabyte of data on. I love it. So the link is right there. You know, it's, it's 150 bucks, not a terrible price for something that's almost a gigabyte a second. Um, so then it comes to the Samsung drives I've been recommending for a long time, and they're still awesome. This is the Samsung T7. This is the one to get. 
Um, it clocks in at 761 megabytes per second on the Mac, 736 megabytes per second on the PC. Um, a little bit slower write speed, 634 megabytes per second, 543 megabytes per second on the PC. It's interesting, the write speeds are just slower across the board on the PC, but you know, I, I can't explain exactly why until you get down to slower yet. You know, there seems to be some, some cap to the, to the SSD speeds, but at any rate, blazing fast i've been recommending these for a long time i carry i work on video files i have one of these for video a two terabyte one and i have one for photos a two terabyte one that i carry with me out in the field and actually work off of because it's plenty fast access plugging that in and working with the files right off of there so it's a good data drive it can be a good lightroom catalog drive it can be a good scratch drive it's a solid uh, piece of equipment love it I also included the old Samsung T5 drives just because I recommended those a long time ago. Um, they've been great drives for quite a long time, but they were superseded by the T7. And essentially, it's hard to even find these. The prices aren't particularly cheap if you get it. They're a little bit slower, but I threw it in here just so you could kind of benchmark it against other stuff. It's, it's write speed was 400. Uh, and seven megabytes per second. I'm not sure why, a little slower on the Mac. 465 megabytes per second on the PC. And then it's re, uh, right, oh, that was the read speeds, sorry. The write speeds were 430 megabytes per second on both systems. So I don't know, maybe something a little hiccup here uh, on the Mac, but you know, basically in that 400 megabytes per second. So, you know, it's half the speed of the cool new Lexar drive and the Samsung T7 sits in between. One thing I'll say about these drives, I've been using them for years and years and never had a problem with one of these. They just last, they're very, very stable. And then the last drive is that slow drive, which is actually a very nice spinning portable hard drive. You know, I think we've all used spinning portable hard drives in the past, unless you're really new to this whole computer game. And it's just shocking how they've been outclassed by all these SSDs we're testing. But I do use this. You can see it's 108 megabytes per second. So, you know, 15 times, more than 15 times slower than that Envoy Express. 113 megabytes per second uh, read write speed. I don't know exactly why it's a little faster. Seems like the read speed and write speeds are a little wonky with the Mac with these slower older hard drives, but they're in the ballpark. It's around 100 megabytes per second read and write on both the PC and the Mac. What would you use this for? Well, for me, it's back up on the road. You know, I don't have my big uh, network attached storage drive on the road with me to back everything up to. I don't have Backblaze in the cloud connected to my, my laptop. It's connected to my desktop. So this forms a second place to put my data. When I import the data, I synchronize the folders that I'm importing it into when I'm on the road with my PC and my Samsung T7 big drives onto this so that it's backed up in a second location. I can throw this in my camera bag or in the van and leave my working drives with the computer in the hotel room or wherever that happens to be. I like to have my data with me all the time. If there was a fire at the hotel, I don't lose my work from the last two weeks. If there was a, a car crash or something disastrous happened to the car out on the road, all the stuff's still back at the hotel with my computer. So having stuff in multiple locations and certainly on multiple hard drives, if there were a hard drive failure, this is just a backup. You know, it's not something I ever want to work off of. It's so much slower and it's going to wind up being a log jam for your entire system working with data off of a drive this old fashioned and slow. So I promised I'd talk a little bit about how I would use these drives in practice. Um, and it would be the same for the PC as it is for the Mac. I use them pretty much interchangeably, although I, I wouldn't use that OWC Envoy Express as a is a cache and scratch drive for my PC just because it, it writes so slow and those tests is 230 megabytes per second. I'd be more likely to use one of the Lexar Blaze drives or a uh, Samsung T7. I think the Lexar Blaze drive comes in a smaller size. Maybe the 500 gigabyte of that would be a great 
uh, potential scratch drive for PC users. You can run through my link and see the different sizes uh, in that downloadable document. But you know, you can see I've got my my main hard drive for my Mac Studio right here. That's the two terabyte Studio. That's the internal M.2 NVMe drive that Mac uh, that Apple puts in the Studio. Then I've got that network attached storage drive that's connected in via that 10 gigabit Ethernet. That's my big 50 terabyte archive of photo and, and video files. And then I've got this OWC scratch drive. Now that's the guy that, that has scratch drive stuff on it, essentially. Um, you know, it's, we'll talk about that in a second, but what, what that essentially does is when you're working with big files like video editing or assembling panoramas and you start to run low on system memory, uh, it can cache to this drive. You tell different software, cache to that drive. On ones, Photo Raw has a cache file that it builds things it needs to use on that drive uh, as well as you know, um, a scratch drive, that same kind of virtual memory. We call it virtual memory. It's like as the system runs low on memory, it can start using that fast hard drive to as, as if it were extended RAM. And you don't need much more than 500 gigabytes for this kind of drive. Um, and then I got the Lexar Blaze drive, which is my Lightroom catalog. If I open that up, I've got this thing in here, Lightroom Master Catalog. If I go in here, it's got my catalog files. If, if you were to look at your wherever your Lightroom catalog is right now, maybe it's just on your hard drive or you've got it on another external hard drive, you would just copy all of these files into a folder called Lightroom Catalog, however you want to name it, onto that fast hard drive. I love that Lexar Blaze for this because it's so fast on both my PC and on my um, Mac. So. I just use that there and you can literally launch Lightroom by double clicking this catalog file. Now, for those of you who are Lightroom users, when you shut down and it asks if you want to back up, I back up to a local drive, a different drive than this Lexar Blaze drive. Um, I back up to the local drive on my Mac at home and then I back up on the local drive of my PC laptop when I'm out on the road so that that catalog file is backed up on both computers. Um, and then I also, while it's connected, have it backing up to the network attached storage device, the, the big drive array, array array of drives, and that is automatically backed up to Backblaze. So there you go. Um, just some little tips on setting that up to run Lightroom really fast and efficiently. That way your catalog is on this really fast, you know, nearly a gigabyte a second drive while your uh, software and your operating system are all on your system drive. And then you've got data, your photos and video on another drive. So none of that data flowing through your system is in a competition with each other at the source. There's input and output through different pipelines that aren't getting in each other's way. Now let's talk about how I set up um, Photoshop first to use the scratch drives that we talked about. If I go into the Photoshop uh, preferences and there's a whole list here, you'll see one's called scratch disks and you just tell it, I want that drive. You can, you can click on this and you can add drives um, as you want and say, you know, it's showing you the hard drives that are connected right now and you can move their order. Um, you, could, you can shift them around, but I want the number one to be the OWC scratch drive. Um, and you can move them up and down. See, now I just switched. I don't want it to be the same drive with my operating system and Photoshop on it. I want it to be that fast access OWC drive, that 1630 megabyte per second drive. That's where it's gonna start caching information. If you're a video editor and you're in uh, Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve or whatever you edit in, it'll have a similar setting for scratch disks because that's working with big files. So there's Photoshop, that's where I would do it. And on one, you jump in, it's very similar. You go into preferences and you go into system and you're just gonna make sure that your scratch folder location is on that drive. You can move it by clicking that and it just takes you into the finder or Windows file explorer. And then your browse cache, I would put that in that same spot. It's on the OWC scratch drive. That's where it's just caching previews and metadata and all that kind of stuff that it might wanna use with your photos. And again, it's nice to put that on a fast drive that's not in competition with your data or with the software that you're working with. So that's how I would argue that setting up your system to, um, 
We'll cancel this and look at it one more time. Let's get back to where we can see our hard drives here. There we go. So we've got, you know, this system drive that has your operating system and your software like Photoshop or On One or whatever video editing software you're working with. The actual source uh, of the software that you're working with. You've got some kind of fast connected drive that has the actual data that you're working with on it. That could be one of these Samsung T7 drives, a Lexar Blaze drive. For me, it's that big network attached storage array of drives um, that are backed up to the cloud through Backblaze. And then I've got this scratch drive that we set up, you know, that, that's where virtual memory gets written or cache files for your specific software. It's just a separate fast drive that the software can use to dump information that it needs quick access to without being in the way with the data or the operating system and software itself. And then for those of you who are Lightroom users, I can't more highly recommend uh, putting your Lightroom catalog on a very fast, drive. You know, for me, I have hundreds of thousands of images from 1996 to today, and, and I need a terabyte. Terabytes plenty for my Lightroom catalog drive. For some of you with smaller catalogs, a 500 gigabyte drive might be just fine. But having those preview files and catalog files and all of the uh, metadata references on that separate drive will speed up the way that Lightroom works a lot. You know, it's not going to be in competition looking for its cache data with the data on the other fast drive or the software itself, whether it's Windows or Mac and Adobe software itself. So that's the way I utilize these fast drives to make my editing pipeline hum all that much faster. I think that slower hard drives and slower cables, even with fast hard drives, can be a real log jam that slows down your editing process, whether you're editing stills, time lapse, or video. All right, everybody, so that wraps it up for this week. For those who have questions about the Mac Studio and why I'm using it after having been all PC for a while, I'll address that in a video really soon, working on that. Um, there's some good reasons for it, um, and I really do love both platforms. So I want to thank everybody for watching. You got questions or comments, hit me up an email, sign up for the office hours, send those questions in. Remember, we're going to be taking some of those on the road. You can sign up at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours for the next big group get together. Um, you know, my links are always out there. There's a free download of all this information that we talked about here in this video's description in PDF form. Uh, all right, everybody. So, Thanks so much. I hope everyone is staying creative, staying safe. I can't wait to get on the road down to Owens Valley to get out shooting Milky Way in some of the most beautiful locations down there. Uh, I will be thinking of all of you while I'm out there taking your questions on the road. So everybody stay safe, stay creative. We'll see you next week.